Segment 31, Pressure and Hydrostatic Equilibrium. A question you have to ask about pressure is, why isn't the atmosphere in a heap at your feet? What is it that keeps air up? The answer is the, the pressure of the air above and below it balancing in just the right way to keep it where it is. Pressure is equal to force per unit area. So how does this force come about? Well, if you take some temp temperature, the temperature represents the mean kinetic energy per particle in a gas, which is, which is equal to K, Boltzmann's constant, times the temperature of the gas. And that's related to the average velocity of the particles. So let's consider the pressure on a wall. Pressure is, as I said, force per unit area. This will be proportional to the number of particles hitting the wall per second and to the speed at each one hits. As we remember from Newton's second law, force is equal to mass times acceleration. So if a particle hits the wall and turns around in direction, that's an acceleration. It exerts a force on the wall. Through a fairly simple derivation, this kind of thinking leads to what's known as the ideal gas law, that the pressure is proportional to the number of particles per unit volume times the Boltzmann constant times the temperature. The more particles hit the wall per second and the faster they hit, the higher the, temp the, higher the pressure will be. It turns out, however, that you don't need a wall to push against. The gas can push against itself by colliding with other particles. And so this property of pressure exists in a gas even if there isn't a container. So let's now consider what happens in an atmosphere. In an atmosphere, in order for the atmosphere not to fall, pressure must balance gravity. This is what's known as hydrostatic equilibrium. Let's consider a massless box filled with air of density rho. So rho is the number of particles times the mass of each particle. And let's consider the forces on that box. So on the left you see a diagram of the box. And the what you have for forces are you have the downward pressure uh, on the top of the box and then this box which has some finite thickness has that downward pressure on it plus the downward force due to the weight of the gas that's in the box which is just the acceleration of gravity gm over r squared times the mass of stuff in the box which is the density rho times the thickness of the box times the area but the pressure is just that force divided by the area. So we take the area back out and we just have the density times the thickness of the box. So the upward force at the bottom has to be equal to some uh, density rho there times uh, kT over the mass of the particles. And so it turns out that as you go down through the atmosphere, the force upward has to increase just by the amount of the the mass in the little layer above it. And so it, the farther you go down in the atmosphere, the pressure has to increase. The density increases and the pressure increases at constant temperature uh, just to compensate the mass of the little layer above it. And, th and by distributing itself in this way, the atmosphere can be static. And this is what's known as hydrostatic equilibrium. So pressure density has to drop as you go up so that there's that difference that exactly compensates for the weight of the air in the box. This is why the air is thinner on top of mountains.